Hello. Today we are starting a chapter on for loops in Learn to Code. And the, uh, just the activity we're doing is using loops. So you've probably looked at the introduction already and you learned that loops are what allow the computer program to do some sequence of commands over and over and over again some number of times. And as you can imagine, this is what computers are really good at, doing procedures over and over and over again. So loops are our first introduction into, uh, into uh, really opening up the power of a computer and its fast processing of commands. So in this particular task, um, we're supposed to use a for loop to repeat a sequence of commands. Okay. Uh, let's look at the puzzle here. In this puzzle, we have a byte facing a row with one gem in it, and there are five different rows and one gem in each row. And the gem appears to be in the third square of each row. So um, I think one thing we would want to do here, and the instructions explain, that we should just try to write the commands that pick up the gem in this particular row and then go all the way to the portal. Okay, so let's go ahead and put those commands in here to do that and we're going to put this in what we call the body of the loop. Okay, so here's our for loop. It starts with the description for and let's not worry about this for right now. This says for i in one dot 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 to some number. Okay, and inside here is the body of our for loop. So let's write the commands we need to do to pick up the gem and go all the way to the end of the row where we'll take the blue portal over to the next row. Okay, let's write the commands to do that. So there's a move forward, then there's another move forward, and then there's a collect gem. We'll be standing right under the gem. Then if we move forward one more time, we'll get onto the blue portal and that will transport us over here to the beginning of the next row. Okay. Now, uh, this number here, the last number in this sequence, where it says for i in 1 dot dot dot, which means up to and including some number, we're going to do this command. Okay, so if we won't only want this sequence of commands to execute one time, we'll say we want it to go from one to one. If we want it to execute two times, we'll say we want it to go from one up to including the number two. If we want it to go 17 times, we'll say I in one up to and including 17. Okay. So in this case, let's just try it one time first. So this for loop, we don't even need this for loop here. We could just get rid of it in this case because these this sequence of commands, move forward, move forward, collect gem, and move forward, if we're only going from one dot 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 one, this is only going to execute one time. But it's a useful thing to try to make sure that it's doing the sequence of commands in the body that we want it to do. So let's run this code. Make sure he picks up the gem, one, move forward, two, collect gem, move forward, and bytes transported over here, okay? Now, we can see here that if we ran the, sem the same set of commands, again, move forward, move forward, collect gem, move forward, we would get the gem in this row. Then if we did it again, since we'd be transported over to here, we would get the, the gem in the next row. And then if we did it again, we would get the gem in the final row. Not the final one, but the second to last row. And then if we did it one more time, we would get the gem in the final row. So how many times do we want to do this set of four commands? Well, we want to do it for this row, this row, this row, this row, and this row. That's five times. So let's set our loop to be for i in the sequence 1, up to five, because five times we want to do this sequence of commands. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and when I run it, I'm going to step through my code so you can see 
the sequence of commands getting executed five times. Here we go. Starts at the beginning. This is the first time through the loop. Now we're done with that sequence of commands. It goes back to the top, to the beginning of the for loop. Executes the sequence of commands again. Now we're done. It's going to go back up to the top. Execute the sequence of commands again. This is the fourth time. Back through the loop. And fifth time through the loop. Okay, great. Nice work. So you can see in here in this for loop what's happening is this sequence of command move forward, move forward, collect gem, and move forward is, is executing five times. And this sequence here is keeping track of the number of times that it's run. So the first time it runs, this will be one. The second time it runs, it'll be two. The third time it runs, it'll be three. The fourth time it runs, it'll be four. The fifth time it runs, it'll be five and the loop knows that it should be done after the fifth one. Okay? All right. Good job, everybody. Let's move on to the next one.